Good morning to you. Welcome to Kingdom Shakers here on Life 97.5 FM, where we chat with a believer in Christ, doing great things for God, using their purpose to, to really break down barriers and fulfill God's mantle on their life. I'm Krista J. Paul, and I'm so excited today because we have a double portion, a double portion. We have, we have one of our very own, plus her husband, who is from across the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. And I'm referring today to none other than Prophetess Vicky Otaroyina and her husband, Prophet Solomon Otaroyina from Nigeria. Now, many of you would know Vicky as Vicky Odell. <laughs> All right. But she isn't, she, she, she is now Otaroyina. And I, I'm so thankful to have you both. Welcome to Kingdom Shakers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> oh, it's so good to be able to chat with you. I feel like, I feel somehow like it's been a long time coming. You know, we've been interacting, Vicky, you and I, for a little while. Not, not very much, but, you know, for a little while. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm in your Facebook group and so on. And I've always been, been blessed and impressed with what God is, by what God is doing in, in your life. And so I said, you know, I, I need to... <laughs> Duh, <laughs> I need to have Vicky on, you know, and it's good for you to be able to come on with your husband as well. Now, for those of you who may not necessarily know um, Vicky L. Otarina, she's an ordained reverend, um, elevation coach, author, teacher, speaker, strategic marketer, and entrepreneur. She's also the CEO and founder of Effective Marketing Solutions, Divine Purpose Coaching, and Divine Purpose Publishing. Her husband, Prophet Solomon, he's the founder of Gita Ministries Worldwide, and the aim of this ministry is to build a generation of people who will radically influence the earth via their various endeavors, enforcing righteousness through the undiluted message of the kingdom of God in their society and environment. Listen, that's more than a mouthful, and I'm not going to waste any more time because we need to hear about y'all. It's not about me right now. I need to hear about Prophetess Vicky and how this union happened and how the ministry started. So let's start first of all with, with the lady. Uh, Vicky, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much, Krista J. Again, it's a pleasure to be here. I thank you and I also thank the listeners who are going to who are listening at this time. Um, you read a, a, a lot about me. Um, I'm a minister of the gospel. But my real call is to, yes, serve God, but to help others to discover their divine purpose. And in saying that, God has always positioned me to help persons become who he's, who he's called them to be. Um, and I do that through coaching. I do that through my books, the books that I've written. And of course, we met. We met and our, our ministries have, have, have meshed um, a lot, but I, my main role is really to help persons discover and, and execute the purpose that God has placed in them. And that purpose really is the, 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 the perfect will of God for their lives. So however, mm -hmm. whatever that will is, helping you to find that path and do what God has called you to do. Amen, amen. And Prophet Solomon. Um, thank you very much. I'm, okay, you've said a lot in the area of the ministry. I, I just want to say a little bit about my background. I'm from Nigeria. I'm from, my mom is a different tribe in Nigeria, while my dad is from a different tribe in Nigeria as well. Uh, but I am the last of my mom. I'm the last one of my mom. And by God's grace, I get some ministries generation established through action is beyond just righteousness, which is part of it. Number one is the heavenly goal, but um, the passion and the purpose came because you know, in the Christian family today, we focus on the spiritual aspect and we forgot that we are living on earth. So one of the goal of Geta Ministries is to also build kingdom-minded businessmen and women that can become billionaires from the age of 27 and to be able to influence 
their generation in their field. You know, it's not everybody that is called into the fivefold ministry, like the prophet, apostle, pastor, teachers, and the rest. But everybody is called as a minister. Your own field. When you have the fear of God and you are able to build a business to raise people with the fear of God, we'll have a better world. And then, and I've also discovered that a lot of people have that mindset, but they don't understand where to go. So the action there in that generation established through action is not just the word of God alone. We have a love work. So Getter Ministries is divided into different arms, like my wife already said. She, her ministry has a place operating independently under Getter Ministries, which is the area of the women, the youth, and you know, the young ones. So, and we met, we met, and by God's grace, we are moving. We are moving forward. So Geta Ministries has been in operation since 2010, full-time in Nigeria. Like I said, it has different arms. So as we continue, we'll see. We'll see. Well, well, well I'm, I'm curious, as I'm sure many people are. How? Oh. How? Oh, you know what I'm going to ask. <laughs> How does a Barbadian woman meet a Nigerian man? <laughs> Get married. And I mean, the thing is, you, you see, this is God because you you are both you both have this passion for the same things of God. Yes. So, so tell us a little bit about your story. I want to hear it? Okay, so I met him. He was on an interview with my apostle, and I, you know, she she said to me, you know, um, greet the man of God as he's coming on. Just you know, greet him by typing and so on. And she didn't mention to me, you should reach out to him and just tell him how the interview went and so on. And I really had no desire, no intention, no anything for any relationship, no anything. As a matter of fact, I remember saying to her, he is not my cup of tea. Because I always had this, this mindset that, yes, my husband is in Africa. I always believed that. But wow. I believe that he was a white South African. That's what I thought. Really? <laughs> so, we started, <laughs> so we started talking, um, just, just really just friendly talk and a very um, ministry focused talk. And eventually we just clicked from there. And I, as I said, I never imagined that it was going to be, my husband was going to be a Nigerian, but God began to, really unveiled to me that he, he, he indeed was. And one thing that I want to say is that I spent a lot of time as a single woman in the presence of God. I spent a lot of time um, be getting healed and whole from a past relationship. I spent a lot of time just talking to God about being his, being his wife, being God's wife, being the wife of God and, and, and understanding what he wants from me as a, as a, as a child and that's his, his bride here on earth. And God began to really clean me up. He, I would go on these dates with God. And as a, as a prophetess, I am, I'm really also a, a, a lot of prophecy comes through writing. So God would just begin to write through me in that season of becoming whole and healed. God would begin to write through me and he would write about this husband um, in my pain of overcoming, in my, in my, in my hurts of, of, you know, disappointments of not being where I wanted to be and seeking that wholeness. God would take me from, I would at, at lunchtime, just take me down to Central Bank and just sit on the steps and start to write, just start to write, just start to write. Sometimes I sit on the benches, just start to write. And he will be pouring out as I write, writing about this man and what he would be. And I wrote for a very long time and saw that. And God always said to me, when this man comes, he will match exactly what I've written through you. Amen. So when he came, I was able to, I already had the blueprint of who he was yeah. and is and would be in my life right that's amazing that is I, I actually remember a live um with your apostle and okay. she, she she was saying there is something happening you know and she she started to tell her she started to tell all the things <laughs> you remember that 
there were so <laughs> many lines. <laughs> oh, oh, no meaning as in she, she was talking about you and she was saying, um, you know, that, that you and there, there's somebody you're talking to in, in Africa. Come on, come on, come on, oh, Mickey. I don't know if you remember that one, but oh. I remember that very well. And I said, oh my goodness, Mickey, man, everything come out now. <laughs> But um, Solomon, what about your aspect of this? What, what, what's your part of the story? I mean, you, you, you would have been chatting with, with Vicky at that time and what was going through your mind? Okay, you know, right, let me begin by saying, so every single man and every single lady, God has created your mate somewhere. It doesn't really matter whether the person is in the same place with you or not. Amen. And one thing that God kept telling me was that he brought Eve to Adam. He didn't take Adam to Eve. He gave Adam time to sleep. He alone prepared Eve for Adam. But before he brought Eve to Adam, Adam had already found his purpose. Okay. So God initially, initially, I had wanted to marry from the United States. I wanted to marry wait, 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 wait. Honestly. Would this have been a white lady? No, 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 no. I, I, I never knew there's a place existing as uh, the Caribbean. I always thought it's just a music. Ooh. But from my childhood, my passion, everything, I just talk about the Caribbean without knowing. I was just thinking it's a word or music. But 2007, God spoke a lot of things to me. I write as well. Sometimes God will begin to speak through my voice and I will record and then I'll start writing. 2007, the description of my wife, everything, I have the book, I tag it my covenant book. Everything about my wife. Amen. Even physical appearance, I wrote it down. But this was what happened. I started looking towards the Americans, the black Americans. Mm -hmm. I met quite a lot of people friendly. But anytime I want to bring out the discussion of a relationship, from nowhere, the, our friendship will just terminate <laughs> until wow. the life. And when we came, when I came up on that life, I had no phone, no handset for six months, for six months. The very first day I got a new handset, the call came in the next day from Apostle, and I don't have her as a friend like that. Mm -hmm. She was my friend, but we were not talking. I'm not right. a social media person. I am not a social media person, so I don't always go on Facebook, stuff like that. But my friend had to force me to accept the interview. And immediately we finished the interview, she messaged me, Prophet Solomon, we welcome your ministry. To the Caribbean. And I was like, okay, because naturally I don't communicate ladies' messages. Right. I found myself right. telling her, I will call you. I didn't call. And when I called, the day I called, I reluctantly called her. I was lying on the bed. I reluctantly called her. And as soon as I saw her, I see the word came out of my mouth. I just said, wow, you are beautiful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's and wonderful. Immediately, I started asking myself, what did you just do? And I told her, I said, listen, I don't want to beat around the bush. I want to marry you. And wait, wait, I'm sorry, saying, wait, did I, did I miss something? <laughs> this is yeah. the first conversation? Yes. <laughs> very, very soon in the... In, in the <laughs> Absolutely. Very, very early, he asked me to marry him. And she was like, okay, um, let's pray about it. I said, no problem. I told her, okay, let's give ourselves one week. Do you know, we couldn't hold to that one. The fifth day, I made up my mind to call her. She was ready to call me. Also. And she was like, the one week is too much. I told her, I said, the one week is also too much for me. And that was how we started building. But there's something I want to bring out here. I opened an account on Instagram. I didn't operate the account. In that Instagram is the only place 
I registered myself as prophet. My Facebook is just my name. And I remember 2013, God told me I was going to meet my wife. I was going to meet my wife. It was when we started a relationship, we have gone far, that she told me that she actually saw me on Instagram 2013. I wanted to send me a message. And she said to herself, when I message this guy, he will, he will ask me out. And she didn't. And I told her, you were doing the prolong our meeting because. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> so, okay. In all these things, what I want to say here is that when God positioned your woman or your man in a place, he brings somebody that will match with you. The training both of you go together might not be the same, but he will definitely build the woman in such a way that she will be able to endure your pain. Mm -hmm. And I've met a lot of people before her, and I think one of the lady I met, I engaged her with a ring. All of a sudden, she just walked to me and told me that God changed her mind. She wasn't ready. God changed her mind. And Wow. That was how I separated well, myself. When I separated myself, that was when I met this beautiful lady here. Amen. But this is what God taught me. God said to me, as a young man, remember I started by saying that everybody has a ministry. As a young man, you have to find your ministry, define your ministry. Then you'll be able to bring your wife to fit into your ministry. Not the other way around, not finding your wife and trying to build her or break her to fit into your ministry. When you're able to find your ministry, you'll be able to know the place of your wife in the ministry, not usurping her authority or taking over her ministry and calling no. That's good. You'll be able to find the place that her ministry will suit in to operate independently. Mm -hmm. And that is so what God has taught me to do. My goodness, and that's exactly what he's done because uh, you would have, as you said, you have were formed uh, Gita Ministries worldwide, and and Vicky just fell fell right in. Now, now, Vicky, tell us a little bit about your background as it relates to what it is that you do you, as an author, teacher, speaker, divine purpose coaching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, how did all of this come to be? Um, all of it came to be, it was really a process of me, and a lot of it started with me finding myself in God. Um, and I would say it really, really was in that single journey of really pursuing who I, I was or who I am and to be who God has called me to be outside, no focus on a man, no focus on me, just getting to know God and who he is and what he wants from me. Amen. Before that, I was, I was very, very sick for a long time. Um, I had bronchitis, but this was the type of bronchitis that a lot of people were saying it was an attack, but it was such, it was such a sickness that I was out from work for five and a half weeks and then about another five, six weeks to recover. Like I couldn't talk after like 30 seconds of talking would have me out the whole day. It was, um, it was a serious attack on my lungs. And it was during me just laying on the bed that God said to me, and you, I've called you to teach persons how to walk in purpose. And it was on that bed that I, he gave me the concept of Mission Inside Out, which is a charity. Mission Inside Out is designed to help persons to pursue their purpose, but more so working with the underprivileged and at risk. And in, in, yes, working with women, but more so the underprivileged and at risk youth. And God would have given me a lot of family experiences where working in those, um, going through a lot of those experiences to give help to to persons that are really at risk and underprivileged. But it was on that sick bed that God began to spoke, speak to me about taking care of my body properly. So um, even through the charity, we talk about balanced Christianity, social, economical, financial, um, health-wise, spiritual, and how to be a balanced Christian. 
but it was also that he said, I need you to teach persons how to live their purpose. So from there, he began to show me how to discover who I am. Yes, mm-hmm. the world has a lot of different templates and I would have done some coaching um, most recently um, about purpose, purpose coaching and so on. But when I went through this course, I realized God had taught me all of this stuff already. And mm-hmm. this is, it's a template that God has given me and, and, and through my own experiences, how to discover who you are, the will of God for your life in that moment and how to execute it. So as a marketer, the, the execution and the, the necessary research that you need to put into your own self, that comes into play um, in the coaching. Um, the fasting and praying that I would have gone through for so many years, that comes into play to discover who you are as well. And just tapping into all the skills, the gifts, the abilities and experiences that God has given to you. But it started on a sick bed. And God really pulling me into a place that I want you to live a better life physically, emotionally, spiritually. And then after becoming single, he took me through a new journey of discovering, loving myself, loving who I am, not want, not having marriage as first priority, but coming to a place where I understood my first priority is to live the purpose of God, the perfect will of God. And if that perfect will includes marriage, wonderful. But I must satisfy my first husband, who is the almighty God. Mm-hmm. So I teach, wow. I teach people that way. I lead people that way. And that has helped me. Uh, that has helped persons a lot. So all the, all the books that I've written, it's, it's all associated with helping persons to overcome the hurts and pains of their past to live a heal, whole, and purpose-driven life. Amen. Could could you just tell us the names of um, a couple of those books so that people can look up? Yes. Look up for them. <laughs> one of them is the first, first, first one, and I and I want to say right now, um, thank you to Apostle Margaret Brady who was who who was my publisher at that point. Um. She, I would have written Live and Not Die that talks about child loss and, and the fact that your loss is not the end, it's just the beginning of purpose. So helping mm-hmm. you to, yes, gain your healing, but move beyond that. Um, I also wrote um, God's Purpose for the Weight for Singles, um, overcoming, going through after becoming one with God or something like that after a break, after breakup, um, learning to wait on God after a breakup. And become whole. We also have God's perfect timing. Um, there is the truth about abortion. We have purpose for the way. Yeah, the purpose we talked about one. God's purpose for the way. And there are quite a few, but I can't remember well, all of them. Well, praise God, praise God, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> um unfortunately, I, our, our time is is going too fast. You know, but I would love to hear a bit of the background as well for you, uh, Solomon, in terms of Gita Worldwide Ministries and how that came to be. And then, you know, how the both of you actually balance everything that you have to do. I'd love to hear about that as well. Okay, Gita Ministries, um, like I say, it has to come out of passion. You know, God called me out of, um, like I said before, being the last born and not being able to enjoy parental love, you know, there's how you try to balance it. But mm. when I was seven years old, God moved me from my family. I started living with people. Mm. Pastors, bishops, serving under them, learning so many things. And that was, what, that was what brought about the passion because I hate when I see people going through some things and people being cheated, molested, or anything. And secondly, I also see where injustice are done. I'm from a country where we complain a lot about the laws and this. And God told me in one of the complaints, he said, there are laws on earth. God cannot just jump down on earth and take things to his hands. We have to give them permission. We have to give God angels or demons permission. And the laws that God has placed, the laws on the land, God will not contradict himself. Then God began to tell me, well, instead of complaining, why don't you raise Christians who have my fear into businesses? 
Because in the world today, we have the seven pillars of the society, which also include Christianity, religion. And then in the religion, if the, imagine if Christianity takes an upper hand in the government, in the education, things will balance, the fear of God will be there. And that is what best about Geta Ministries. Mm. Enforcing righteousness, not by violence, but by teaching the genuine word of God. Because even in the Christian God, it, what we are receiving is half truth. And half truth is more dangerous than lie. Mm. So Geta Ministries is all about bringing about balance, igniting the end time revival, and then bringing about balance in the church and in the world. And secondly, mm-hmm. uh, personally, I also do, personally, I'm also into strategic business planning and marketing. Yeah. So in any field, we consult, we give you advice. Even in the church, we give strategic evangelism pattern where you mm-hmm. showcase Christ and win the heart of the people to God where crisis focus. And Geta Ministries and Mission Inside Out works hand in hand. Because in the Geta Ministries, we have a branch that has to do with charity. Whenever we go out to preach, we give people food, we give them clothes, we give them things. And that is one of the area that Mission Inside Out feels in. I told my wife, I am not the type of person that will suppress a woman or bring you, force you into Geta Ministries. You operate independently, the youth, the women department, and the charity is you, is your own aspect to manage. But you have to give a report to Geta Ministries. And so far, God has been helping us. Listen, only God, only God could have done this. (laughs) Only God could have done this. I mean, you both have talents and gifts that you contributing to the earth and and god has seen it fit to put you two together but you you wear so many hats how do you balance everything that you have to do um i just have like a couple of minutes uh how do you balance everything that you have to do and 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 make it work um balance balance really has a lot to do with you know having that relationship with god and really having him as you know as matthew said Seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God Amen. and his righteousness. And then all of these different things will be added, all these fringe benefits. And, and you, you apply that to every part of your life. Seek God first and all the things that he's given you to do. He will put persons in place that help you because you can't do everything yourself. There are partnerships and collaborations that are necessary in the kingdom of God. God will put kingdom-minded people to help you. And I always say to people, if you don't have a skill, you, you hire that skill. So that's me all the time. A lot of things that I do, I don't carry every part of the project myself. There's always a person that is specialized in that area. I may have a specialty in that area, but I have a specialty in many areas. So the persons that are really specialized in specific areas, we work together to get things done for God. Because as long as God is giving you a a plan, a mission, a commission, there are persons he's set in place to get it done, to join with you to get it. Amen. Solid, solid, solid. My goodness. Solomon and Vicky Otaroyina. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, you so it. much for joining us. You get good. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for Kingdom Shakers. You know, I know that you're a blessing to the kingdom of God. And may the Lord continue to strengthen you and give you liberal wisdom, as he says in James 1 5, to do what you need to do um, and add to you as Matthew yeah. 6 33 as you just indicated yeah um thank you so much for joining us how can people connect with with you both well get to ministries is on on facebook g-e-t-a ministries i'm on facebook instagram just search for vicky otarina and my husband will be building his platforms very soon on social media but he can be followed as solomon james on facebook as well Wonderful. Thank you so much to both of you. God bless you. And that's it for Kingdom Shakers for today. Join us again next time. Thank you. Thank you. God, God bless, bless you. you.